Question five then from the 2022 National Five Paper One. Two mark question. Complete the square. Express this quadratic expression here, the square term, in this form as a perfect square plus a bit left over. Now to do this you need to know this pattern here. X plus A squared. X plus A squared. The pattern for that is square the first, square the last, and in the middle, twice the product. The product is AX doubled as to 2AX. So doing that in reverse. If you've got this sort of expression, you can put it into a perfect square just by halving this amount, halving the coefficient of the X term. As long as that number at the end is the square of half of that. Well, you can see here that this wouldn't work because 15 isn't the square of half of that. Half of that is four. And that would need a 4 squared. That needs a 16 at the end. So that's not a perfect square just now. But you can still use this pattern. Because if you've got these two terms, which you don't want to mess about with, you can always form the square from that, and from that see what you would have needed to complete it. So the way you normally do this is you split it up. You take the x squared plus the 8x, and you forget about that 15, because you know it's just not right. And then you say, well, how would that work? How could I make that into a perfect square? Sometimes it's better to just go to your answer to get this middle bit. It is quite simple. The number you want here instead of the 15 should be the square, a squared, which is the square of half of that. So in other words, you half that is 4, and you square it. I'd really want a 16 here. But you can also get it by just by doing this. You can say, well, that should be double it, twice the product, so that should be a 4. That's me got my square now. I said the only way I could get that 4 would be I'd have to have had a 16 there. So quite often the route you do is this. You start with this bit here, which you don't want to mess about with. Half that number. So whatever that says, that's half of it. If that was minus, I'd be minus. And then that will then give you what you really needed. Square it to get what you need. Now there's something wrong with this. Because... There was just a 15 here to begin with. There was no 16 there, only the 15. So if you add on a 16, balance it off by taking off the 16. Now you can say, well, 15 minus 16, that'll be minus 1. So that's the answer. Now the marks would have been for forming that bracket just by halving that coefficient 8 is one mark, and then fiddling about correcting this constant at the end gets to the other mark. Now there is a big long algebraic way of doing this that you wouldn't do, but just in case you're interested, which would be to say this. If you've got x squared plus 8x plus 15, and it's meant to equal this thing here, x plus a squared plus b, well what does that lot come to when you multiply it out? Squaring a bracket, square the first, twice the product, square the last, plus b. Those two things are meant to be the same. Now, to be the same, they should have the same number and types of parts. x squared x number. x squared x, I'll just emphasize that that's the number of x, and that's the number. And if that's the case, you can say this. Well, that means that the 2a, the number of x's, must be 8. So the a must be a 4. And having that, you know that the number must be 15. You know that the a squared plus the b should be 15. Well, that means I know that a is 4. So that means that 4 squared and the b should equal 15. So that means that b must be the 15. Take away the 4 squared, which is 16, which means b must be negative 1. But it doesn't just say find A and B, it says express it in that form. So you'd have to finish off by saying, well, OK, it's X plus the A, which was a 4, so it won't change any signs, plus the B, but the B was a minus 1, so minus 1. Now, I'm not saying you should do that. It's just that's a way of doing this type of thing. You would just stick with the numbers because you can virtually just do that in your head, can't you? You would just say, well, I would need a 16 to go with that, but I've only got 15. So I'm one short. I'm one short of a square. One short of a square.
Now that was only part A. Part B, hence or otherwise, state the coordinates of the turning point in the graph of same expression, f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 15. If you were to draw that graph, and you should know it's the right way around, positive x squared, that's the wee happy face. Really because when x is big, x squared is positive, and when x is very negative, x squared is still positive. So at the extremes it's going to go up. But anyway, what the quants are that turning point? Well, that's the lowest answer this will ever give you. So if you can write that as x plus, and only says state, so you just state it, but I'm just writing this down. What's the lowest value this can ever give you? Well, when you square something, it doesn't matter if it goes negative. The answer goes back positive again. The lowest answer you can get to this part is zero. So when would that happen? That would happen when x is negative four. So when x is negative four, this part is zero. So the lowest answer you'll ever get to is negative one. Now all it says is state the coordinates. So the coordinates of the turning point would be looking at this part, the lowest that can get to is zero when x is negative four. And if x is negative four so that that part comes to zero, the answer is negative one. That's as low as it'll ever get. That's the mark. Number six then. Find the equation of a line. Find the equation of the line that passes through these two points for those three marks. Give the equation in its simplest form. Well, it only takes two points to form a line. Now, you don't need a diagram, but it'd look like this. So, in order to find the equation of that line, you need its gradient. The gradient means as you step along the way, do you go up or do you go down to get onto this line? And if that's the case, how much up or how much down? The first thing you really need is, what's the gradient? What's the difference in the y-coordinates? That's the important bit. How much you climb or fall compared to how much you went along here. So you could either say you've gone forward two and fallen, look, some above to one below and fallen eight. Or just put in the numbers. Y2, negative one, take away seven. Negative 1, take away 7. Look, you've fallen 8. Negative 3, take away negative 5. Keeping them in the same order. I'm starting with this point. You could start with that point. It doesn't matter as long as you keep them in the same order. But if you want the actual numbers you get to make sense in terms of this, these directions of going forward and either up or down, you would start with the point that's further forward. So that's why I started with negative 1, take away 7. And now I'm going to do negative 3, take away 5. Take away negative 5. But if you did that in the reverse order, you'd still get the same answer. So there you've got negative 8 over 2, which cancels down to negative 4. The gradient of that line is negative 4. Now that you've got the gradient, you can get the equation of that line in one of two ways. You could either use that finder equation y minus b equals mx minus a, and which is just the gradient equation, notice, rearranged. If you take that denominator across and multiply, this is what you've got. You can either use that, or you could use the form that you're ultimately aiming for, hopefully, which is y equals mx plus c. But if you're doing it this way, then I put down this and I say, now, what have I got? I've got m is negative 4, so that's what m's about. And I need a point on it. Well, I'm spoilt for choice. You could choose either of them. See, I choose that one. I choose the point negative 3, negative 1. So that's the A and that's the B. And then just feed it in. So Y minus the Y coordinate, that's minus the negative 1, is M negative 4. X minus the X coordinate. It's full of negatives here. So keep them all under control. Put them in brackets. I'll just tidy this up. That's Y plus 1. And that's negative 4x. Now, negative, negative's positive, but that's another negative multiplying it. So that goes back to minus 12. And then finally, y equals negative 4x. Take the one across and subtract. Minus 13. Now, putting this down, that's using this particular form of it, this finder equation, but also putting the numbers in, gets a mark. 
and you get one mark for the final simplified answer. And since there's a diagram can, you can check, does that make sense? Negative 4 is fairly steep down. Yes, it is. And negative 13 at the end means it eventually cuts this y-axis way down at negative 13. Yes, it looks like that. The other way you could have done this is just by going in with y equals mx plus c. I'll just use those same two. So that when the y-coordinate is negative 1, and the gradient is negative 4, and the x-coordinate is negative 3, Feeding that in just leaves you C to find, so you should be able to get that. So that says that negative 1 is 12 plus C. So C would be, I'm reading it backwards now, take the 12 across and throw it over to join the negative 1. That's negative 13. And then just feed it back in. So Y equals, what was M? Had that already. Negative 4X. What was C? Minus 13. If you were to do it that way, one mark would be for putting numbers into this equation, just as the first mark was for putting numbers into that equation, and the last mark's for getting the final answer.